All right. In this video, we're going to set up a hosted Cassandra instance and have it ready and available for us to use so that we can code and connect to it using our Spring Boot application. We set this up on uh, data stacks. So in order to do this, click on the link in the description, which is going to take you to the sign up page, which allows you to sign up for a free tier. Uh, and this is really a free tier. You don't get to, uh, you don't need to enter your credit card details. You don't need to make a payment to use this free tier. It's pretty generous. There's a lot of stuff that you can do uh, before you run out of the amount of usage that's allowed in the free tier. So here, when you sign up using the link in the description, you're going to get here uh, to the dashboard. Uh, here is where you can start a new database. I have a bunch of databases over here. You probably won't have it when you're creating this from scratch. What you need to do is click this button here, which says create database in order to create a new database. So I'm going to click that. And uh, I need to specify details about this database. I'm going to call this inbox app. That's the name of the database. It is database for my inbox app. Now I have to give it a key space name. The key space is kind of like a schema, which allows you to group multiple databases under a certain key space as a part of a hierarchy. I'm just going to call this main. I think all of my Cassandra databases for the series is going to be all of the Cassandra tables, sorry, for the series is going to be inside just one key space. So this should be fine. You would typically use this when you have like an admin part of the app where you have admin tables and that goes to a separate admin key space and the regular part of the app. Like basically you want to classify your Cassandra tables based on your application needs, not the database admin side. The application needs calls for a separate categorization of tables where you can use key spaces for different categorizations. Now, the second question here is to select a provider and a region. You can choose between Google Cloud, AWS, and uh, Azure. I'm going to choose Azure North America here and uh, US West because it's closer to me. You can choose whatever is uh, closest to you. and. You know, it gives you this cost, but if you do the calculation for $25 per month, you can do a whole lot. Okay. You can do a whole lot. You do the calculation is like, it's going to take a lot for you to meet this pre tier, which is why I'm pretty confident to recommend this to people who want to try out Cassandra's like it's, you can do a lot of stuff for free. Just give it a shot. So I'm going to create database and it's going to create the database with that name, with that key space and in that region and with that hosting provider, you know, you can choose different hosting providers for different databases. That's perfectly fine. So here is my inbox app or uh, database that it is just in the process of creating. So I'm going to pause this for a bit and uh, come back to this when this is ready. So when you're just creating a database, it's going to say pending for a bit. And then after a while, once the database is ready, it should say active, like it says over here, right? Okay. So my database seems to be up. So here is the, uh, database that I created inbox app and, uh, it is saying active, which means that it is up and running ready for me to connect, right? So I'm going to click this connect button to open this page, which tells you how you can connect to this database. There are a bunch of different ways you can do it. You know, we have a document API, GraphQL API, REST API. You get REST API big terms. If you don't want to deal with database connection, you can just use it like another REST API. But that's not what we're going to be doing in this course. We're going to be doing Java connectivity using Spring Data Project, right? So you click on the overview page and it's going to tell you basic information about the database, like how many read requests, how many write requests, storage and data transfer. If you go to the CQL console, this actually allows you to write CQL statements and interact with this database. So for example, I can say use main, which is my key space. And now I'm in the key space main and I can do select star from, and I press tab and I get all of the tables that are available here, right? These are some of the system tables. So you can see a lot of them start with system underscore. So if you create a new table here. It'll show up here and you can run queries on this. So this is, this is, you know, ready to go. 
Now I can take all of the tables that we created with the physical data model and start creating them over here, right? I can start typing create table, but that's not what we want to do. Like I said, we want to have this be connected to a Spring Boot uh, application and have the Spring Data project kind of send and create these uh, data definition language statements and have them run. What we need to do then is to get enough information to connect to this thing. When you create a Spring Boot application, how do I connect to this thing? Well, you can use this UI for it. So here I have the, uh, here's my inbox app database. You click here. It's going to say, it's going to have this option called generate a token, All right? So here is my inbox app. I go over here and then you have this hamburger menu thing. Here is a generate a token, right? When you click on it, you're going to get this UI where you can create a token that you're going to use for connecting to this database, right? You're not going to create user ID and password here. You're going to create tokens which are associated with the roles. And this is what you're going to give to your Spring Boot application and say, hey, connect to this thing using these tokens, right? So first I can select a role. I'm going to choose admin user. You can find, you know, choose fine green permissions. So here are the permissions for admin user, which is basically everything. And I'm going to click on generate token. And here is my token. This token is visible just once. All right. If you were to close this page, it's going to go away, right? You're not going to be able to see this token again. So you either click on download token or you leave this page open and you can copy paste from this thing. So you have three elements, data elements here. So one is the client ID, one is the client secret, and the other is the token itself. These are the three values that you're going to provide to your Spring Boot application when you're having it connect to this database, right? So if you close this, it is gone. In this case, you're going to have to create a new token. You can create as many of these, so that's fine. So if you lose a token, just delete it from this UI and create a new one and you should be fine. So this is the token creation part. One other thing that I should mention is don't copy this token from the screen. I've had uh, a couple of people ask me about this. This is a token that I've generated for the purposes of recording this tutorial. After I'm done recording this tutorial, I'm going to be deleting this token because I don't want this to be public knowledge, right? So there are a couple of implications of this thing. First, you need to make sure that this token is really a secret. This is a secret, right? It literally says client secret here. So this is confidential information, right? You don't show this to someone else unless you want them to connect to this Cassandra database. And you also don't check it in to source control, right? So let's say you, you make changes, add it to your source code and check it into Git or GitHub or whatever, right? Anybody who has access to your source code repository will have access to this token. I might have this available in my repository just for illustration purposes and because I'm too lazy to scrub them, but I'm okay doing this because I'm going to delete this token afterwards, right? But you always need to be careful when you're adding tokens to the source code. From the time you publish this to a source repository to the time you delete this token, there is always going to be that risk of somebody picking that up and connecting to your uh, database, which you don't want. So make sure you keep this confidential. This is not for public use. This is not for reuse by multiple people. And these values for these tokens that you're seeing here is meaningless because by the end of this video recording, I'm going to be deleting these uh, tokens. So it's not going to be applicable anymore. Now that we have this, we have everything we need on the database side. We have an Astra DB. We have a database running on the cloud and ready for us to connect from our Spring Boot application, which is what we're going to do next, right? We're going to create a Spring Boot project and we're going to tell it to connect to this Cassandra database. We'll see you in the next video.